Open your Bibles with me tonight to Hebrews 11th chapter. We're going to continue on the subject of the substance of things. Some important things here that are very familiar passage of Scripture, but let's take a look at it again. These are foundation scriptures, so they bear repeating. Hebrews 11.1 1 states, Now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now notice it's not the evidence of things you can see. Now you need to understand that if you have evidence of something in a court of law, that proves that it existed or it happened or you couldn't have evidence of it. So it says faith is substance. One translation says faith is giving substance to things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. By it the elders obtained a good report. Verse 3 says through faith, or we could say it this way, we understand it was through faith that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Now God framed the worlds with his words. You remember we talked about in the other session that in the beginning, John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. All things were made by Him. Now when it says Him, it's referring to the Word which was Jesus. Jesus was the personification of the Word of God. Now I, I get amused at some of the faith critics back years ago. I don't hear it so much now. But they'd say, uh, well, these faith folks try to, try to make the Word God. Now, why would world would we want to do that? The Bible says that. John says, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In other words, it was God over every situation and circumstance of life. God's Word is. And it says, all things were made by Him. Him who? Him the Word. Jesus was the creator of all things. He was the Word personified. And then uh, in verse 14 of John 1 says, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Now if you go and read in Luke how the Word was made flesh, you know that the angel appeared to Mary and said, You're highly favored. You're going to conceive and bear a child. And that holy, uh, his name called Jesus, and so on. She says, how, seeing I know not a man. Now, you know, uh, doubt's not a bad word if you just don't know. And it wasn't that she wasn't believing what the Holy Spirit said to her or what the angel said to her. She had a legal doubt. If you don't know, you'd have doubt. Just don't know. And he said, the Holy uh, Spirit shall overshadow thee and, and that holy uh, child will be called Jesus, or Emmanuel, God with us. So she said, be it unto me according to your word. Now notice what happened. She said, I receive the word. She said, you found the woman that will believe you. I believe it. Never happened before. Never happened again. But she said, be it unto me according to your word. What did she do? She received the seed of the word. It was the word of God. Now remember in the parable of the sower, Jesus said, the sower soweth the word. It's obvious he's talking about sowing the word of God. And where did he sow it? In the hearts of people. In their hearts. And uh, the word of God takes root and grows. Now, here's Mary. She hears something that is so totally foreign to everything we know about in this world. Now, if you were in the service, the other service this morning, uh, we talked about quantum physics and some things that just work totally backwards from everything we know in this world. But it, it, when you get to studying it, it sounds a whole lot like faith. You know, give it away and you'll, get, you'll have more. Uh, that doesn't sound right to most people, you know. In the natural world, uh, they say uh, uh, seeing is believing. The Bible says believing is seeing. And God told Abraham, said, I'll give you everything you can see. And God will still give us today everything we can see in the promise of God. 
if you can see it, get it on the inside of you, conceive it in your heart or in your spirit, it becomes part of you. And then Proverbs says, Proverbs 20, 27 says, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. Now that's a little blind to us because we don't use candles for light today, normally. Here's the way we would say it in the modern translation. This is St. Charles' translation. The spirit of man is the light bulb that God uses to enlighten you the human spirit, by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit. How do we know we're born again? God's Spirit bears witness with our spirit because we've been obedient to the Word. We receive what the Word said. So you find that, that uh, the, the human spirit is a design of God to enlighten you and bring revelation. And when you get the Word on the inside of you, it enlightens you. Remember what David said? The entrance of the Word bring a light. It gives you understanding. So as we speak the Word, Paul tells us this in Romans 10, he said, the righteousness which is of faith says, the Word is nigh you. What Word? Word of promise, Word of God, the promises of God. In other words, they're as close to you as getting them in your mouth and speaking them into your heart. Now, when I went to school, they knew back then, many years ago, that what you say with your own voice long enough will get in you and it becomes a part of you. And you will never forget it. Four times four, 16. Every day of the week. Now, it's not different on Thursdays or Fridays. It's a mathematical law. There's a law of faith. And here in Hebrews 11, he says, through faith we understand the worlds were framed by the Word of God. Jesus was the Word personified. Now, when he comes back riding that white horse, his name will still be called King of kings and Lord of lords and the Word of God. He is the Word of God. He is the personification of God's Word. So, God framed the world with his words, and whether you realize it or not, you're framing your world daily with the words you speak. Now, you know Einstein was one of the greatest uh, scientists that, that we've ever had, I suppose, or, or right up in the top ranking. And he made a statement that uh, <laughs> you may have to write it down and think about it a while, but, but uh, when you first hear it, you think, that's not right. He said, the, the uh, past, the present, and the future is all happening at the same time. He said, there, the, there's only an illusion that makes it appear that it doesn't. Now think about it for a minute, and, and you'll have to think about it longer than a minute, but to, to get this point. Today, the past, what you did and said in the past, caused you to be where you are today. What you're doing today will cause you what's going to happen to you in the future. So it's all in a timeline. And he said it's only an illusion because it's all linked together with one rope, so to speak. What we speak, we believe. What we believe, causes us to act and make decisions, and those decisions will, the past causes the present to come, and the present causes the future to come. There's something about the Word of God that is different from, from other just normal words. They have the DNA of God in it. That's the reason that you get faith from hearing the Word of God. If there wasn't any faith in the Word of God, you couldn't get any faith by speaking the Word or hearing the Word. So God's Word is filled with faith. It is the substance of things you hope for. Now, I mentioned this in the other session, that H2O is water and, and uh, it, it's made from hydrogen and oxygen. What is it, two parts of hydrogen, one oxygen, or vice versa? Well, in, in the gas state of hydrogen and oxygen, it's invisible. 
But when you combine them together, it gives substance to, and it becomes water. And, and it's very destructive or a very good blessing, as we've seen in the hurricanes down in Florida the last uh, a few, well, almost months now. But water in itself is not evil, but yet it can cause destruction. And uh, when it's in the gas state, you can't see it. Now listen to the words of the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 1. You don't have to turn to it. Uh, trust me, it's there. In verse 20, he said, the invisible things of God, now, now listen very closely, the invisible things of God from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Now that sounds like a paradox, doesn't it? being understood by things that are made. So things that are made reveals the invisible things of God. Now let's think for an instant. What did God make? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. How did he do it? With words. And we talked in the session this morning that uh, they, they, the smallest subatomic particle that they could find, they analyzed it, they call it a quirk, and uh, they came to the conclusion that it, best they could analyze it, it's nothing but sound waves. Now, isn't that interesting? And God said, let there be light. He looked out and he saw darkness, and he said, light be and light walks. Now, the invisible things of God are clearly seen being understood by things that are made. So he called light out of darkness. His words of faith, which is the divine energy of God, was transported. His faith was transported by his word out there into the darkness and called light out of darkness. You can do the same thing. Somebody said, well, now, you know, Brother Caps, that was God. Read a little further. He said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness. Let them have dominion. Now, them were going to have dominion the same way him had dominion. <laughs> and I understand that's not good English, but it'll help you understand it sometimes. <laughs> so God, in the beginning, it says, God said and God saw. God said and God saw. When you say what God said about you long enough, you begin to see it on the inside of you. It creates images in you. It's like a blueprint or a road map. And uh, in the spirit, it gets on the inside of you. Uh, Proverbs says, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life, or the forces of life. My son, attend to my words, incline thine ear to my saying. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of my heart for their life and healing to all your flesh. So as you keep that word in you, it creates an image inside you. It's an impossibility to live in, in, in health and talk sickness and disease because faith cometh by hearing. You're releasing spiritual forces that are destructive when you speak things that are contrary to the Word of God. Now, remember the words of Jesus? He said uh, to the devil when he appeared to him on the Mount of Temptation, said, turn these stones into bread. Now, he'd been fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. He said, if you be the Son of God, turn these stones into bread. In other words, use your anointing and power for your own selfish benefit. He said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. In other words, there's life in every word of God. I mean, you get healed by the begets if you speak them long enough, you know. <laughs> <laughs> there's life in every word of God. Now turn it around and let's look at the reciprocal of that truth. That being truth, the truth, then concerning the words of God, 
then let's analyze the words of the devil. That's opposite of God, so there's death in the words of the devil. There are spiritual forces of death in the words of the devil. And, and you know, I'm amazed at, over the years at, the, at people that can tell you everything the devil said to them. But, but sometimes some of them will say, do you have a word from the Lord for me? Yeah, I have a word from the Lord for you. Quit listening to the devil and surely quit speaking what he said. <laughs> because you're releasing spiritual forces that can bring sickness, death, and destruction. God's word is creative power. I, I remember something the Spirit of God said to me years ago. I was praying in the Spirit. And he said, just as there is creative power in my word, he said, my word has not lost one bit of its creative power. It's still as powerful as it was the day I spoke it. Just as there is creative power in my word that will come forth and, and work for you when you speak it and proclaim it until you believe it, there is evil power present. Now listen to what he said. There is evil power present in the words of the enemy to afflict and oppress everyone that speaks them. God's word is healing power. Psalms 107 verse 20 said, God sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Now, he didn't say that he sent his word to do it. If he said he sent his word to do it, maybe it didn't work. But he said he sent his word and did it. So far as God's concerned, it's a finished work. It's an established fact. It is the truth that by Jesus' stripes ye were healed. He doesn't have to suffer anymore. But faith is what gives substance to that promise in your life. So if we talk sickness and disease, if we talk poverty, if we talk these things and wonder why the blessings of God doesn't come or the healing of God doesn't come. A pastor friend of mine said, uh, a fellow came into his office one day and he said, uh, I want you to tell me why God won't heal me. He said, uh, you just told me out of your own mouth. You don't believe he will. And he doesn't have to do anything about it. He's done all he's going to do about it. But you're speaking exactly contrary to his word. Now, I remember years ago, back in the early 60s, I was traveling, speaking as a layman. And uh, I spoke in a church one night, and I had the altar call. Well, it was... Several people came, and, and one fellow came, and he said, uh, I want to know why God won't save me. I said, what do you mean? Oh, he said, I've prayed. I've gone to every altar call for uh, every church I've been in for. And he named, I think, a couple of years. He said, I've been begging and crying for God to save me, and he just won't do it. Can you tell me why? I said, I need to talk to you back in the back room. Get you away from the crowd. So I said, now, here's what the Word said. So I turned to, to the Romans, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in thy heart God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Oh, he said, I know that, but he won't, he, he won't save me. I said, just be quiet. <laughs> I read it again, and I read through it, and I said, now, don't say a word. Except what I say, I'm going to lead you in a prayer. And I started leading him in that prayer, and of course, he, he, I got down, you know, I confess that Jesus is Lord of my life. He said, yeah, but he won't save me. I said, we found the problem. He says he will, and you say he won't. And you're having what you say. I said, now, don't say a word that I don't say. <laughs> I don't care how bad you want to. Now, pray this. And I led him in the center of prayer. Father, because of your word, I believe that if I confess with my mouth Jesus is Lord, believe in my heart that God has raised him from the dead, that I am saved. So I confess Jesus as the Lord of my life. 
I am saved. And, and he, he's, he's repeating it after me. I'm born again. My sins are gone. He said, glory to God they are, aren't they? <laughs> now, here he had been two years. <laughs> won't know why God wouldn't save him. And he was saying all the time, God won't save me. God won't forgive me. All he had to do is just get in agreement with the Word of God. I mean, it will, it will put you down a primrose path of destruction if, if you speak things that are contrary to the Word of God. Faith gives substance to it. There was substance to the Word of God, but he, there was no faith there. Now, he had hope because he came to church for two years trying to get saved. But until somebody took the Word and caused him to shut his mouth long enough to hear what the Word said, then proclaim with his own mouth what God's Word said, then he was transformed in an instant of time. Faith gives substance to things hoped for. It is evidence of things not seen. So it's important that we keep God's Word in our mouth. Um, it's health and healing to all our flesh. Now, when the Apostle Paul makes the statement there in Romans, the, the uh, first chapter, the invisible things of God from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by things that are made. Mary received the word of God from that angel. She received it into her spirit. The embryo in her womb was nothing but the word of God. She said, be it unto me according to your word. Then she left there and went to Elizabeth's house and said, God hath done great things for me. She had no evidence Amen. except faith. Amen. Faith gives substance to things hoped for. So you could have hope and no faith, and there's, there's nothing to give substance to that hope. But God's Word is filled with faith. And outside of that word, outside of getting that word on the inside of you, you're never going to enter into the realm of the promise until you are fully persuaded of the promise of God. I'm talking about entering into it the way God wants you to. Now, in the Hebrews 11th chapter, uh, we find here that it says that, well, let's just read from verse 4. By faith, Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice than Cain by which he obtained a witness that he was righteous and God testifying of his gifts. And by it, being uh, dead, yet speaketh. <clears throat> by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death. It was not found because God had translated him. And before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it's impossible to please God. Now, why is it impossible to please God without faith? Because God is never pleased if we don't enter into the provision that He's made for us. Now, you talk about things out of the realm of, you know, the past, the present, the future, it all happens at the same time. Here's a man that lived in a day, Enoch. It was totally out of the realm of the time when there was going to be any rapture. But he looked down through the tunnel of time and saw that there was going to be a rapture, and he said, I'll just take mine now. He just walked with God and was not for God took him. It wasn't for his day, but through faith, he entered into things that were not yet available. I appreciate you joining us for the Concepts of Faith broadcast today. Now, before I leave the broadcast, I want to make the offer again of calling things that are not as though they were. Uh, two CDs, offer number 1215 for $15 plus $4 postage and handling. And we have a toll-free order line, 1-877-396-9400. If you order by MasterCard or Visa, you'll get it much quicker if you order by the toll-free order line. Calling things that are not. Now, what does that mean? That means to call things that are not manifest as though they were manifest until they are manifest. Now, this is a scriptural method 
in the Bible that Jesus operated in in all of his ministry. God operated in it. God looked out and saw darkness and called light. Somebody said, yeah, but that was God. Well, God said, let us make man in our image and our likeness. Let them have dominion. How were them going to have dominion? Same way that he had dominion. By calling things that are not. Now, what are we talking about? Things that are promised in the Bible, in the Word of God. God hath given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Well, now, if he's given those things, how did he give them? Through the exceeding great and precious promises. These are the promises of the new covenant. Now, Abraham had a promise, and he had it 24 years, and he was no closer to having the promised child than he was 24 years earlier until God changed his name and forced Abraham to say what God said about him. Now, as long as his name was Abram, he, didn't, he was no closer to the promised child Isaac than he ever was. But when God changed his name and forced him to say what God said about him, he was calling for the promised child. He was calling things that are not. And this is a biblically sound principle. Jesus operated in it all of his ministry. This will give you great insight into how to call for the promises of God in your life, confess them until it gets on the inside of you. Paul said the word is nigh you. It is in your mouth, and then it's in your heart. It's first in your mouth, then it gets in your heart. The entrance of the word bringeth light. It's like a camera. A camera, the film is so sensitive to light that it implants in you uh, in that film, what you saw. Same way with the Word of God. The answers of the Word bring a light. That's offer number. Offer number 1215. Two CDs for $15 plus $4 posted in Hamlet. Have a toll free auto line, 1 877 396 9400. Until next time, this is Charles Capps reminding you that Jesus is coming soon. We are glad you could join us today for the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teach you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. To order the product offered on today's program, send your check or money order to Charles Capps Ministries, or to place your order on Visa or MasterCard, call 1-877-396-9400. For more information about Charles Capps Ministries or for a schedule of meetings, write to Charles Capps Ministries, P.O. Box 69, England, Arkansas, 72046. This broadcast has been sponsored by Charles Capps Ministries and our partners in this area.